This is Twit. Today, it is all about Ryan Shrout getting paws on the Intel Core i9-7900X 10-core Skylake X processor review, which technically is faster than my Ryzen CPU, but cost how much more, sir? How much more did it cost? Some dollars. Some dollars? <laughs> Some dollars more. I don't know which Verizon well, CPU you have, actually, so I guess it's impossible for me to answer that question immediately. I have an 1800X. Okay, so it's double the price. Yours was MSRP 499. You probably paid a little bit less than that. This one launched at nine, launches at 999. Huh. So, uh, you know, the we, we've talked a lot about Skylake X and uh, right. these processor launches. This is so this is kind of like the first wave of them. It's, they're going to come in multiple waves. This is the 10 core and below launch. So your 10, 8, 6, and 4 core parts that fit on this platform. Uh, the the four cores that are Cavi Lake X parts, the 10, 8, and 6 are your Skylake X parts. Uh, Intel only sent us over the 10 core processor for this review. We have the we have the four core uh, Cavi Lake X we're, we're doing stuff on as well. Um, so we, we, we talked a lot about the specifications, right? The, the 7900X is the 10 core 20 thread um, replacement. It is, it is, how do I say this? Last year's flagship was the 6950X. It was a 10 core processor from Intel. This is right. the replacement in that segment at 10 cores. Uh, and if you go down to the second um, table, actually, that compares the 7900X to just the 6950X, and the 7700K, you see a couple of interesting things that give you a clue as to what the performance is actually going to be like. One is you get 10 cores on the new part, 10 cores on the old part, and four cores on the uh, Cavi Lake 7700K. So I picked these two comparisons because the Core i7-6950X was generally considered mm -hmm. the top performer multi-threaded processor for a consumer. And the right. Core i7-7700K was generally considered the best single-threaded or lightly-threaded uh, processor that a consumer could buy. Mm -hmm. So if you look at these specs, you kind of see there's like a merging of them on the Core i9-7900X. So you get 10 cores still, but uh, the base clock is, you know, a little bit higher than um, the last year's enthusiast part. But if you look at the Turbo Boost 2, which is the clock speed of a uh, maximum clock speed for all of the cores in single threaded or lightly threaded applications you see it's 4.3 gigahertz which is within spitting distance if you will the 7700k's speed and if you look at what the the uh, uh the the x29 platform slash core i9-7900x has something called turbo max turbo boost max 3.0 which is the ability for it to pick specific cores on the die that can perform better uh, and clock those a little bit higher, you get up to 4.5. So what you see is if you look over at the 7700K and the 7900X per clock speeds, they're they're within range of each other now, right? The base clocks are definitely significantly different, but I've never really saw it go down to 3.3, even fully loaded um, for running like blender rendering over the course of, you know, literally 10 to 12 minutes of full load, um, we saw those clock speeds That's hitting impressive. about 4 gigahertz on all 10 cores. Um, right. It's quad-channel DDR4 up to 2666 supported. Obviously, you can clock it higher if you have higher speed memory, 140-watt uh, TDP. And then that last line is what's really important as well. Last year's 6950X got demolished in the media and from consumers because it launched at $1,700. And it was a drastic jump over what we had seen previous like extreme edition flagship parts right. from Intel in the past. Um, so even though 999 is still very expensive for a consumer CPU, uh, it is worth noting that it is $700 less than the 10 core processor last year while offering better performance pretty much across the board. Um, well, this is good, so, right? Because we've, yeah. we've had these minimal performance increases from Intel for the last couple generations on the desktop power, you know, uh, sort of power efficiency in terms of mobile has been a fantastic story. Overall performance has not been a great story if you are at the far end of the bell curve and need all the power. But, you know, obviously, A, Intel has, has shifted the price down because, B, they're also going to be going up to the Skylake X stuff with the 7980XE, which is going to be selling for $2,000. Um, with, you know, that's their thread right. competitor with the 18, you know, 18 cores, 36 threads. Um, 
Yeah, you know, so it, it, they're, they're definitely going to have more expensive options. But right. the, the way I'm looking at this is um, the, the, the number of people that need more than 10 cores, honestly, the number of people that need 10 cores for stuff is, is right. fairly small. And as you go above that, it becomes even smaller. Uh, and what Intel has, has shown to do with this part is a, they're able to offer a CPU that has as good of single threaded performance as the 7700K while uh -huh. improving on the multi-threaded performance of the 6950X. So, right. you know, last year they, that was, they said that was the goal last year when they started introducing this idea of Turbo Boost Max technology was to be able to like make sure you had the option to have superior single-threaded performance without sacrificing, uh, but you still had all of the cores and all of the threads necessary for the best multi-threading performance when those workloads sure more necessary and this is um much closer to that capability than they were at last year right, right? the single threaded performance of the 6950x was its detriment last year this year the 7900x doesn't really have that if you look at uh some of the performance results like if you go to the uh um the page titled uh, media encoding and rendering and you go down and just kind of look at uh, Cinebench, for example, Cinebench R15 single threaded, you'll see the single threaded performance of 7900X is, you know, essentially identical to that of the 7700K, which was the highest processor in our testing up until this. And then if you look down at the multi threaded performance result, you know, it's got a solid 25% improvement. Uh, I'm sorry, 15% improvement over the 6950X, right? So it is the new best multi threaded processor. Now, a lot of questions about what AMD is going to do with, with Threadripper. And then if you want just massive amounts more, you could wait for up to Intel's 18 core part, which is like, as you look at the market today, they've done a very good job of creating an incredibly high performance part yes. for people that want to do that. There is one performance oddity that is worth uh, discussing quickly, and that is on the 1080p gaming performance. You remember... Probably not that long ago, uh, we were talking a lot about the Ryzen processor and its 1080p right. gaming situation, if you want to call it right. that. Uh, as it turns out, there were some architectural changes in Skylake X that bring about a similar oddity. Uh, the architectural dun, changes dun, being they dun. they move from, yeah they move from a ring bus, which in a simple format is a is a bidirectional but linear. Um, communication method between all the cores, the caches, the memory controllers, PCI Express, whatever. Uh, they've moved over to a mesh interface, which lowers the average latency of memory, but it increases the maximum latency of memory, right? And huh. in a very similar, for a very similar reason to what we saw with Ryzen, the L3 cache is slower on Skylake X than Broadwell E, um, which exhibits the behavior in 1080p gaming as slightly slower scores. Now, if you look at like Civ 6 and Far Cry Primal, the differences are actually pretty big. Um, but in general, it's just a couple of percent slower than the 6950X, which mm -hmm. is not that big of a deal, but it's it's worth noting. And also worth noting because the clock speed of the 7900X is significantly higher. So if we were to make if we were to you know match the clock rates of these two processors we would actually see that detriment extend down some uh, for the 7900x kind of as as if we wanted to just prove out that okay this architecture sure. is less efficient at this workload uh, you you could you would do that um so, you know, all, all the talk we had about the Ryzen uh, stuff, you know, and that, you know, why was the 1080p gaming performance slow? And then we eventually figured it out and it was like, okay, what's, what's AMD going to do about this? And they working with game developers on engine optimization. Intel's now kind of in the same boat. Um, Everything because old of this is new again. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the, the Delta is less, right? And I think mm -hmm. in all, I mean, we tested eight different games and I think in uh, all but... One of them, yeah, and it was very, a very small difference, 126 versus 124 frames per second. And all but one of them, the Ryzen 7 1800X was slower or even with the 7900X. So, like, right. um, you know, the 7900X is a small step back from the 6950 for 1080p gaming, not higher res gaming, but 1080p gaming. Uh, but it's still able to kind of maintain its advantage over um, Ryzen and 
those instances, right? So take that for for what for what you will. Um, I'm also so that, that's like the just performance oddity. I'm just going to be obnoxious here and say, you know, if you're spending four hundred, six hundred, a thousand dollars or more on a CPU, you really need to upgrade beyond a 1080p monitor. Just just do yourself that. A hundred percent with you. hundred percent with you. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I I put that comment on the last page. It's like if there was a there was a lot of discussion about people who buy five hundred dollar processors aren't doing 1080p gaming, and if you subscribe to that, then you definitely believe the people who are buying a thousand dollar processor aren't doing 1080p gaming. <laughs> So, although, you know, it's, 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 you know, there are a lot of people out there doing 1080p game. I was going to say the other thing is, is, you know, and do fairness is as much as I want to be like thousand dollar processor one, just to emphasize, as Ryan said, you know, if I think if AMD Ryzen didn't exist, I think the Core i9-7900X, if it was even released at all, would probably be a 1500 or $1,800 part. And number two, for a comparable number of cores and threads, the Core i7-7820X is, is $100 more. Now, you could say that's, you know, you could say that that's 25% more than the AMD Ryzen, but mm -hmm. it's, it's... That's uh, me... That to me is probably the most interesting. Like I wanted, to, if I'm if I wanted to get another part in immediately, it wouldn't be Cabby Lake X. I kind of know what that's going to be performance wise. Sure. The the eight core versus eight core battle is 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 very interesting, right? So the the hundred dollar yeah. price delta uh, is 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 more manageable for 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 people, and then you get into what can the Ryzen seven eighteen hundred X really do against the IPC improvements and that type of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to, um, you know, this is actually a good reminder for me. I'm going to bug Intel about getting in uh, the 7820 and maybe just the 7800 as well, because that's 389 right. and that kind of goes up against the 1700X Ryzen part. So, um, but you're you're 100% right in that um, the, I, I think these parts were going to be released anyway. They, right. like this was on their roadmap. Uh, they probably brought it in a little bit, you know, maybe a month or two early, trying to make sure that they would beat Threadripper to the punch and and kind of get some some extra momentum that way, even though their high core count parts aren't going to be till after. Uh, but the pricing definitely was adjusted, and Intel would would, would t will tell you as much, right? If you talk to their to their marketing and their product managers and stuff behind closed doors, they don't want to go out and like talk about it on their earnings call, but they'll say yes, of course, this was a reaction to the reemergence of competition in this market, and. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of reviewers and a lot of commenters talking about this part, like talking about that process as a, as a negative, right? Like, oh, the only reason right. these prices are this much is because they're reacting to AMD. And I was like, maybe it's been so long that you don't remember, but that's expected. That's what you want to happen. You would have. Yeah, that's the whole Intel point release of having competition. Exactly. <laughs> the Intel reacts, makes a part that's slightly better and slightly lower, right. lower price. And then AMD does the same thing back again. Uh, and that's what we want. And you want to see that in the CPUs. You want to see that in the GPUs, right? That's why we want. That's right. why we want Vega to be successful and come out at the right price point with the right performance uh, to, to really kind of move and cycle things forward. So I, I don't see this as, as a negative. I would say I would caution people into to buying these parts until we see Threadripper, right? right. Um, Threadripper is not that far away, but it's like, I don't know, a month plus, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can wait that long, um, then it might be worth seeing because chances are there will be a Threadripper processor at a thousand bucks or less that has more cores. And yeah. how that performs, I don't know. We'll have to see what the clock speeds turn out to be. Um, but it, it will be more interesting gonna, than just where it is now. I think it's going to be really interesting to see that because you look at like the Ryzen 7 1700X, the Ryzen 7 1800X, like on a handbrake test. You know, they're within 10 mm -hmm. seconds of each other. The uh, the Core i9 7900X significantly faster than a Ryzen 7 1800X in part because it has you know two more cores, four more threads. I would think I don't know the maximum number of threads that Handbrake will handle, but also because you know on a per core basis, I think the Core i9 7900X is definitely faster. So you know, yeah. is it worth paying twice as much to be approximate just under 30% faster on rendering? Not quite for me this week, but you know. I yeah I'm with you. I think the that sort of eight core ten core battle later this summer is going to be, I you know it's going to be awesome for consumers and content creators that are looking to buy a new machine. Um, this is exciting stuff. I agree. Exciting, I agree. It, so exciting stuff. I I think a lot of people had negative negative feelings about this launch, regardless of what it was going to be, because. You know, you saw the flagship part was two thousand dollars. You, you, we found out that those parts were going to be released until later. You know, kind of adding into the story that 
uh, Intel was just scrambling to come up with some with some kind of thing. And at a thousand dollars is still a lot of money, but I'm impressed that the that the single threaded performance compared to the previous 10 core part went up as much as it did. Like we're talking 25 to 35 percent um, in our in our testing, and then multi threaded still gets still gets a sizable boost. It does draw a lot of power. There's the 1080p gaming concern in there, so you know check out the the, the full review that I wrote if you want to see all those details. Um, but uh, a better a better part launch than I had originally right. thought. So.